race, which um, in three words is uh, a retreat for combat veterans. Uh, and then we also have Michael Bohr from Car Lots, which is the consignment store for cars. And I'm not going to tell you about them. I'm just going to tell you that they're here, and then we'll have two great uh, companies coming back next week. We'll just go ahead and please welcome Lynn Bukowski from LZ Warrior Grace. So you get set up here. I'm going to play your movie. This kind of does my job for me. That's great. It takes a minute for this to go through. Uh, Lancaster Farms out in Suffolk uh, actually donated about $6,000 worth of material for an Eagle Scout to put in a fire pit for me. And then they came out later and did this documentary for me. It's about three minutes long. Elsie Grace is really the moment you drive down the driveway. You can take a deep breath. You don't know that you're anywhere near a city. You can groom animals. You can um, sit near the book, or you can play or work hard and find your own place. Elsie Grace was really a dream of my husband's. He served for 32 years as a Navy SEAL. And he did two more contract after that with just government contract. And then when he fully retired, he wanted to build timber frame cabins out in back of our farm in North Carolina and just call his brothers, they call each other brothers, uh, to come in and after, as they came home from combat, just to have a place to uh, decompress and rest and um, get things back together, body, mind, soul, and spirit, so they could go back to regular. We had just kind of begun that process. In January of 2010, he retired, and in June of 2010, he went on a bicycle ride, and he died of a heart attack, and he was only 55. So uh, I sold the farm in North Carolina, thinking I can't handle this by myself, um, and moved to Virginia Beach to be near my mom uh, with my kids. And uh, it kept really working on my heart that he had this dream. And I thought, well, I can do something like that. I don't know how. And, and truly, I'll tell you, I woke up at night at 3 a.m. in the morning with ideas of, well, this is what I can do. My daughter found this property. And she came and looked at it. And uh, the first thing she saw at the, at the very end of the long driveway was a Japanese red maple tree. And, which I had left behind in North Carolina. That was Steve's favorite tree of all time. So I considered that a sign. My daughter walked back out to the um, back side of the property that's fully overgrown and found uh, St. Francis. And it was missing a hand and had a hole where its heart would be. Uh, and she sent me a text message and said, aren't we supposed to be healing hearts and letting you help, help in hand? all these years and don't know how to do this, so today will be my first day. LZ stands for Landing Zone, it's Landing Zone Grace, and um, the entire mission is to give these men and their families a confidential and secure place to come after combat uh, and find some rest. They might still be active duty and go back to war, uh, but most of them are transitioning out of the military and the stark contrast between combat and coming home to civilian life is uh, overwhelming. And most of them need the time to um, decompress. A lot of the things that they experience, 
silence, isolation, exhaustion, and disconnection. Uh, this is uh, across the board. Uh, all of the military probably experiences it, but the special operations forces, not just SEALs, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, all of them come home from combat and go through some of these experiences. Uh, we have 22 suicides a day. I think it's more like 26. Not all in the special operations forces, but their lives. It's not a rehabilitation or mental health facility. What it is, uh, how I've designed it, is a family farm where people, where they will come in and they will have projects to do uh, and uh, be able to eat three meals a day around a table because a table, um, eating meals together facilitates talking with each other and that's what they need to do. Confidential is a huge part of this. Most of these guys will not go to the VA or any of the mental health facilities that are available to them uh, because of confidential purposes. Everything that they say um, actually goes down on a piece of paper and it's available to future employers, contractors, the military, and it uh, really hurts their career choices later on. I know that probably would <laughs> seem not true, but it is true. What we're doing here is, um, right now, I have an architect who is building, uh, putting plans together to put lodging in. We do have a four bedroom farmhouse. It's not big enough to house who I need to house. So we need to build lodging. I have um, volunteers and people already coming out. Um, so we have meals around the table. This is the extraordinary fire pit that a, a young man, a 16 year old boy scout, um, built with his troop for LZ Grace. We call it the warrior fire pit. We are right on the water, and so there will be a lot of um, hard play, a lot of recreation, and horses, and canines. I have, um, or oh, dogs. <laughs> so I'm so used to calling them combat canines, that, uh, um, but we have plenty of dogs. Uh, I'll also have licensed um, people on board that handpick. Not everybody is as uh, good at this as others, so it'll be a um, hand-chosen um, thing to create a continuum of care as they leave. It'll be a seven-day program uh, to begin with, and we'll see if they need to stay longer. And my um, hope is that the people who come to LZ Grace will leave and come back and be mentors for those that are um, coming in. We already have peer mentoring. We ha already have all these activities going on. We're not officially open yet because I had to, uh, it is ARP land, which is um, uh, agricultural land, and there are restrictions. And so I had to work with the city about what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. Uh, it is a haven. These are just a few quotes and testimonies from people who have come. Um, and I'm sorry, they're kind of long. But it really does give you an idea of who um, comes and what they do. Not everybody is there to find healing from combat. They're there to find respite. I will never give out names or take pictures. I had a funny experience on Facebook where somebody said, all I see is all these wonderful, beautiful pictures of scenery, and I never see any of the guys doing anything. And I said, and you never will. <laughs> um, this is a, the addition to the farmhouse going in. Uh, we have a memorial walk and quarter deck going in, and a college actually, at a Tidewater Community College, got together and designed meditation gardens for me. So we have all these projects happening. Um, okay, you ready? Yeah. All right. Because there's definitely a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I encourage you There's guys. There's a way, to, yeah. Okay, I encourage you guys. But the best way to get the information is to ask her okay. questions. I'm always standing up here with 500 questions, but I want to turn it over to you guys first. What questions do you have for Lynn? And when we're done with this, we're actually going to ask her what we can do for her. But what are your questions for Lynn about LZ Warrior Grace? Chuck and then Joe. Uh, since this is specifically said special uh, operations forces and whatnot, uh, is it also for any 
other military veterans that may be experiencing post-traumatic stress or anything like that? It will be in the future. Um, I had to narrow it down to how many people I can have and um, of course special operators are close and near and dear to my heart, but it will be in the future. I've also opened it up to first responders. Um, the, I'm going to switch this. The, the um, Virginia Beach Fire Department has been coming out on a monthly basis and volunteering. Uh, between 15 and 30 of them come out. And I've talked to them a lot about the trauma that they go through. So I will be opening it up to all veterans eventually, but we need to get started and make sure that we serve the special operations. Always nail you. your core first mm -hmm. before you expand, right? Okay, question? So you're a not-for-profit, I'm gathering? We are. We're, um, I set it up like this. My, um, I incorporated um, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, so the nonprofit profit is um, corporation. But I also, uh, the corporation owns a for-profit, which is um, I am boarding horses, and I'll open up the dog facility for boarding as well, and then I can put that income back into the foundation. It's a way for me to make sure the bills keep getting paid. <laughs> Yes, sir. So it, it looks to me like you you really you know found a great need to be that yeah, needs to be served. Uh, what's going to happen when you're full? What's your vision for beyond? Because I think it looks like you're well on your way here. What's going to happen when more people are signing up than you can uh, take? Then, uh, well, I hope to expand. That's for the future. Um, we can only take right now eight people at a time, and it'll be seven days. And so, if we have to increase the number of weeks we're open, uh, then that's what we'll do. Um, but I really hope to expand and go. Um, this is a singularly unique situation that I've done, and so I will need to probably gather what's working and what's not, and go. Actually, I'd like to go across the country and teach people how to do it and open it up so that we can serve all veterans. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, when um, companies apply here, they have to distinguish themselves between a unique local business and a startup under three years, um, some of whom have plans to grow, and some of whom who are serving a, a special community within locally here. And it sounds like you're kind of open to both. I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that'll be a few years down the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, first of all, really inspiring story. Great presentation. Um, how is it currently funded, and how do you anticipate this being funded going forward? Well, I'll be perfectly honest. I used my husband's life insurance to put the down payment on this property, <laughs> and I have savings in the bank. I do get um, donations, and I do have people now who are an investment company up in New York is starting to raise funds for me, uh, but it's a slow going, so I pay the bills out of savings <laughs> right now. Says a lot. Do, do you know your break even? I'm oh, sorry. No, but do you go know ahead. Your break even point. And uh, do, do you know when you will break even or how to get to break even? Uh, so you're no longer paying at a. So you're self sustaining. So, so that I can pay myself back a little bit. Well, no, just to be able to be self sustaining. Yeah, be self sustaining. Uh, yes. Uh, be viable. It'll be at. When I hit $1.8 million, then I will be able to actually fund it for three years and be even. Mm -hmm. is that, is, did I answer your question? Are you talking about annual? No, no. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm try I guess I'm trying to think about from a revenue stream. Um, do you have a map that's going to kind of get you? Think about it from an endowment stream. Than a revenue stream. It, well, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but as, as a stream of cash, you know, is it always going to be dependent on? So it's always going to be dependent on donations. So I guess. Well, hopefully not. That's why I created the for-profit, which is to board horses and dogs, and uh, I oh, have so you didn't mention that. Okay. There's a balance here of a for-profit to support the non -profit. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I did briefly, but it was... Uh, I must have missed that. Um, I opened up the stable. I board horses specifically, and uh, I'll be boarding dogs and working with a um, canine training group, and they'll come in and lease the property. So I created... Um, Revenue to support business. Is it so? Is it free to the people? It's that come? free. It's absolutely free to everybody that comes. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at grants? I have looked at grants, and I actually have received one grant from AmStar for five thousand dollars. They're very grants are very specific on what you can use it for, which is great. 
um, they gave it to me to build veteran housing, so it'll be used as part of that. There's a lot of uh, non for profits in this region, especially like Navy Seal Foundation, um, different things. Uh, it's uh, the 180S front of like fire lawyers or something along the line. Have you thought about partnering with them? Because they're, they're very specific about trying to help veterans and, as well as families of veterans and whatnot. Is there a potential that you see maybe even in the future? Obviously, thank you very much for supporting your husband. There's children and stuff and family members that are involved that could also probably benefit from uh, something like this, especially special forces mm -hmm. and family members, just because sometimes their family member is asked to leave within 24 hours and they don't hear back from them for maybe a month or two. So um, The answer to your question is yes. Uh, partnering, um, I, we need to look at that carefully. I've already been in touch with the Navy SEAL Foundation and uh, Special Operations uh, Warrior Foundation. This is for Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, so it's across the board in JSOC. Um, what I, it will be open to the families of deployed, and uh, I will use weekends, actually three-day weekends, and bring in Gold Star families, families of deployed, um, and uh, you know, one of my biggest goals is to have. Um, Kind of a big play yard, <laughs> and uh, let the let the spouses, you know, whether that's a man or a woman, because there are females in the special operations, let the spouses get some rest as well. So yes, it does sound like this is um, that st finding strategic partners is uh, going to be a key. I am right now trying to find business. Um, I want to put together a board, a, just a very specific board, rather aside from my corporate and my advisory board, of local um, business people who are well connected and can guide me because I'm not uh, well connected in the area. Yeah, I think uh, Town Bank, for instance, is uh, strong. You know, likes to uh, give back to the community. They're a local. They're more of a local bank as opposed to like you know, they're more like a Virginia bank, although they're expanding that to Richmond. Getting someone from Town Bank on the board, I think, uh, for instance, would be good uh, to because they would at least even you know, whether they invest themselves, they would be, you know, give you uh, a viewpoint of someone mm -hmm. who's perspective. A perspective, yeah, you know, brings that view. Yeah, that just kind of ties into my question, which is who's helping you now? Is this you and your daughter? Um, I, my daughter uh, is the co-director and. Uh, <laughs> my 90 year old mother and <laughs> really yeah, totally this is a family, family operation oh, I, um, yeah. I do have a board I have a, a active uh, two active duty um, officers on the board I have um, a captain a retired captain Larry Bailey who is on the board and I have three uh, former um, military now one of them is Joel Lambert he's now the star of the discovery lone target <laughs> I had to mention that I have to put that up no problem, no problem. So, uh -huh. More questions? Uh, so I'm going to ask one more question and then we'll ask a question of you, which I think you already alluded to. So when you put in your application, the first thing I thought of, and you touched on this in your presentation, it's not a rehabilitation center or a mental health facility. It's not really a medical facility at all, right? Um, and so the, some of these questions here kind of shifted my thinking. It's like, you know, where does this, it's such a, such a huge community here, a big topic everywhere, and then you got the VA and the paper. How do you fit in with this ecosystem? And and like, it's it just seems like there are so many competing forces and stuff. Like, how do you find your place and and succeed? Like, or maybe flip it around. What what ways could you fail at this? Uh, I, I think I, I could fail if I don't open it up to new ideas and accommodate uh, the, the actual needs. I need to watch and see what's needed. For Steve and I were married for 30 years before he died, and we lived all over the globe. And he would bring his platoon guys home, and I would feed them, and we would talk. So this is something that I've done for 30 years, and what I need to do is is now I'm refining what works for them, the hard play, the, the recreation, the leaving them alone, I think. The way I could fail is to not pay attention to that and, and be really stringent, I think, about things. Um, 
I, this is not an application process. This is going to be a referral process through the commands, through the chaplains, through um, personal. It'll be a, it'll be a personal referral. Yeah. Okay. Well, our okay. One last one. Well, no, I was going to offer up just from my own experience in starting my own business. Um, another point that you might that you could reach is you exhaust yourself by taking on so much personally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whether it's personal finances, personal the day-to-day -day work, the going out, the outreach. So the earlier you can engage a, a team and strategic partners to so that you yeah that help you carry that burden. Yeah. Um, the, I appreciate the more that. Yeah. I, I am yeah, in, too much. they're actually gathering around me now. Yeah, I appreciate that advice because it is exciting. It's a 20-hour it's day. And you have to let go of it at some point. You have to let go and share it. It's hard enough to be an entrepreneur in, you know, in insurance, what I do. You're dealing with a hugely emotional topic at, at the same time. So, so the last question for, for you is how can the Virginia Beach community in One Million Cups help you succeed? Uh, I. There are two things. I need financial support, and so what? Uh, I need financial support, and I need expert volunteers. Um, expert volunteers meaning builders and uh, people who have building materials and can advise me on engineering situations. Uh, and those are the two areas that Virginia. You know, get the word out if you can't uh, donate financially. Then perhaps you know somebody who can, or. Um, you know, an expert out there that might be willing to help. The funders and, and, and advisors and things right. to help you. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. That was really powerful.